today if it is Coventry that uh, face uh, Bellevue. If it is a Coventry Bellevue final, Coventry will be delighted with that because they fly around Bellevue. They've got points from Kirkman's Hume Lane here earlier, um, the, earlier in the season. So, uh, but Coventry got a job to do against Poole on Friday at Brandon, and we'll be there, mm. and we're looking forward to it on Friday night. Scott Nichols off the inside in blue. Peter Kellerman goes off gate two in yellow. Josh Grzonek gate uh, three in red. And a, a big race coming up then here with Nick Morris in white. So who is going to be in the final? Bellevue or Swindon? It's looking good for Bellevue at this stage. And will it be Poole or Coventry? The bees, it has to be said, have been magnificent around here this year. They would really fancy their chances if they can get past Poole. Yeah, well, Poole will be a tough hurdle to overcome, of course. They're the reigning champions and they have a very strong winning mentality. And I just sense that they are riding with a lot of emotion in that team with the injuries sustained to Darcy Ward. So I'm sure it's going to be a very tough encounter between the two big um, heavyweights of the league. Bellevue have been terrific this evening. Swindon have been in truth, disappointing, but uh, that doesn't take anything away from Bellevue. They set the tone in Heat 1 with a big 5-1, and they've just continued on. Heat 14 is another super lineup. Here we go. Yeah. In fact, uh, Bellevue's only dropped points at home were against Coventry. Now, that's a good start here in Heat number 14. Oh! And for the very Nick Morris on. Oh, no, did Peter Kilden miss him? Well, thankfully, Scott's up, and the race... Oh, it's going to wow. be stopped. Yep, the race is stopped. I tell you what, Peter Kittleman, how on earth he missed Nichols there was remarkable. I thought for a moment he was just going to ride straight over the top of, top of the uh, the Bellevue Aces cool. man. That was close. It was really very close indeed, and Nichols just got that real loaded grip coming out. Somehow got off the back of the bike, and Kilderman, who was right up behind him, missed him. Remarkable. Thank goodness they have all come through this. Thank goodness. Keep your eyes on the man in the blue. Peter Kildam is right behind him there. And oh, oh crikey, O'Reilly, he does very well. And Nichols does remarkably well to hang on to the bike. If he had let go of the bike, I don't think Peter Kilderman could have avoided him. If he had let go of the bike there, the bike would have gone across the track and cleaned up Kilderman as well. And, uh, well, I've got to say that it's unusual. Normally, you let go of the bike, but uh, fortunately for Kilderman, Scott Nichols doesn't. Morris is out in front. Now, all of a sudden, Nichols gets loads of grip, can't hang on to it. Um, but he can't stop the bike lifting, and how on earth killed him and just avoids the back of him. Well, it's, uh, it's a minor miracle. Well, there is an exclusion. It is Scott Nichols, no major surprise. So there will be a restart with three riders only. Morrison killed him up against Grzonek. And thankfully, 